we have had what i i can recall about three we had the one uh where it was reported on february 5th this year that dready you know dready the man uh what is correct name joseph wilkinson called dready or um, was shot and killed in south rhinevelt he was at work march 11 2024 Head of the Special Branch Unit of the Ghana Police Force, Errol Watts, dispatched five Special Branch officers to intercept a motor car that they claimed was used in the commission of a crime earlier that day at Vreden Hoop on the west coast of Demararo. This one that I read about Dreddy, that was reported on the 5th, so that might have occurred sometime around the 4th, sometime around the 5th of February. Then, less than two weeks after, we had the report that shot Tocqueville electrician remains in critical condition. Police says that 36 year old Winston Hazel, the electrician who was shot 12 times on, on Tuesday night in Tocqueville, Georgetown, remains hospitalized in critical condition. The driver, fearful for his life, managed to reverse, sped away, and drove to the Providence Police Station with the said ranks giving chase. Upon arrival at the Providence Police Station, the driver exited, and that's when they noticed it was Sergeant Ronald Payne, fully dressed in his uniform, unquote. That there was another drive-by. So that seems to be the thing now. And I want to find out from the police if they are seen, seeking to see if there is a link between these recent drive-by shootings. Because the man who was shot at yesterday is known as Corlop Osafo Siresti Grand. Currently, there exists a bitter rift among the top command of the Ghana Police Force as to how many of the officers involved in the shooting should be placed under close arrest. And the oh, you still didn't get your ticket? This flight takes off every single day. Tap that subscription button. Thanks. Welcome back to the HGP Nightly News, a story that broke this afternoon. There is absolute silence from the Guyana police force after five of its officers opened fire at another cop who was at the time driving his personal motor car. The details are contained in this report. The Guyana police force continues to hide from the media the exact details of what transpired on March 11, 2024 at Republic Park on the east bank of Demararo. Nightly News questioned head of the police force corporate communications unit Mark Ramatar, but he too opted to remain silent on the issue. Nightly News was reliably informed that around 11.30 p.m. on March 11, 2024, head of the Special Branch Unit of the Ghana Police Force, Errol Watts, dispatched five Special Branch officers to intercept a motor car that they claimed was used in the commission of a crime earlier that day at Vreden Hoop on the west coast of Demararo. The five officers spotted a car at Republic Park, East Bank Demerara, matching the description of the car they were searching for. That's when the five special branch officers repeatedly fired at the car in an attempt to have the driver surrender. Quote, the driver, fearful for his life, managed to reverse, sped away, and drove to the Providence Police Station with the said ranks giving chase. Upon arrival at the Providence Police Station, the driver exited, and that's when they noticed it was Sergeant Ronald Payne, fully dressed in his uniform, unquote. Nightly News understands that 88 spent shells were recovered by other officers who responded to the scene. The officers were then placed into police custody at the Providence Police Station, but a telephone call from a senior police rank ordered their release. Currently, there exists a bitter rift among the top command of the Ghana Police Force as to how many of the officers involved in the shooting should be placed under close arrest and the alleged attempt to shield a few of the culpable men in uniform. One senior officer was overheard saying that, quote, I am not taking any orders from Brutus or Budram. I only report to the president or the commissioner. That's it. I said what I said, unquote. The Police Office of Professional Responsibility is said to be investigating the matter, but statements regarding the sh Delta 9 family, 
Welcome back to the flight. If this is your first time flying with us, do remember to hit that subscription button on your way in and stay up to date on everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora body. Thanks. What we just figured out is that Watts allegedly is a very dangerous man. We just figure out that Watts is a very dangerous man because Watts allegedly is the shot caller that send the hitters at Sergeant Payne. Watts is a shot caller allegedly. You see, we talk about this thing with repetition and how important it is and the fact that you should guard it with your life. Law number five, 48 laws of power Robert Green, right? Now, you see how he's able to hide in plain sight and no one is really knowing? Well, some people know, allegedly, but you see how he's able to hide in plain sight and you would never think that he's that type of shot caller that would send a hit, allegedly, at another member of the force, allegedly. This situation right here is crazy. Who must be sanctioned and put on the close arrest? The force is divided. The force divided. But guess what? My perspective, and you could tell me in the comment section if you agree with me or not. I think all of them should be put on close arrest. And I really wondering, who's the person who got he back? Who got Watts back? Who got Watts back? Because it seems like Sergeant Payne is a major pain to a number of people. Who got Watts back? Because it seems like Sergeant Payne is a major pain to a number of people. This right here got a lot of implications and I believe it go higher than Watts. When we figure out what's really going on beyond Watts, it's going to be crazy enough to make everybody say, what? Watch it and you're going to see. A corrupt force is worse than no force at all. Because a policing force is one of the most important elements in a country so that it could function and grow in the way that it must. Let's compare our force to the force in Dubai and ask ourselves, is it more corrupt? Allegedly, he's presenting it and analyzing it from the perspective of a member of the force. From the perspective of a high-ranking member of the force, he's analyzing it and he's saying about it. Coral up, allegedly hit Sun Skull, right? And Sun Skull got hit just minutes away from where Dreddy got hit, allegedly, right and then guess what just a few days after a few minutes away from where dreddy got hit another person got shot up 12 rounds and he is critical allegedly so how is this not all connected guess what if all of these things happen at night time is the same ranks because all of this happened within minutes and it happened within the vicinity of one police station. Allegedly, East Le Penitence. I'm not calling no names. But something going on over there. Allegedly. Because in that vicinity right there, East Le Penitence is the station that fall in the center of that. Because we're not going to allegedly count in that little outpost at the back by last entrance. They ain't fit nothing. Car people is getting robbed at gunpoint just a few inches away from there. Nothing will happen over there. Allegedly. But we're going to get into the conversation right now. And we're going to hear from the top cop. And he's going to tell us from his perspectives as commissioner what he thinks about what's going on with this rise in the drive-by shootings. People roll up and cut, shoot, cut loose with AK-47s at this man and his companions who were there. Luckily, uh, nobody was um, struck or killed. But you know, in the past, just over the past month, we have had what? I, I can recall about three. We had the one uh, where it was reported on February 5th this year. 
that Dreddy, you know Dreddy, the man, uh, what is his correct name? Joseph Wilkinson called Dreddy. A relative um, was shot and killed in South Rhineveld. He was at work and he came out. We showed that video, the clip here, some time ago. Somebody pump shots in Dreddy. Dreddy was rushed to the hospital and either pronounced dead or died shortly after. So there's one drive by. Then we had a report on the 16th of February. This one that I read about Dreddy. That was reported on the 5th, so that might have occurred sometime around the 4th, sometime around the 5th of February. Then, less than two weeks after, we had the report that shot Tocqueville electrician remains in critical condition. Police says that 36 year old Winston Hazel, the electrician who was shot 12 times on, on Tuesday night in Tocqueville, Georgetown, remains hospitalized in critical condition. Police commander had said, that he remains hospitalized in a critical condition. Police say they are investigating the shooting which occurred about 7.07 7 p.m. on Tuesday at Tocqueville, Georgetown. According to the police, the attack was carried out by two unidentified men on a black XR motorcycle wearing hoodies and armed with two handguns. Investigations so far have revealed that the victim was returning from Dorman Street Lodge in a car, PRR, so, 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 so. as he turned into the driveway, the two suspects approached on the motorcycle and stopped a short distance away. They then dismounted, pulled out two and guns and discharged several rounds at the victim. He sustained several gunshot wounds. He sustained 12 gunshot wounds. Three to his left side and they described where he received the wounds. And then we said, only 94 the last, they are reporting, that is what they are reporting. Let me get the thing here, good. They are reporting that there was another drive-by. So that seems to be the thing now. And I want to find out from the police if they are seeing, seeking to see if there is a link between these recent drive-by shootings. Because the man who was shot at yesterday is known as Corlop Osafo Siresti Grandel. Carl Safo or Corlop. Well, the police must know about Corlop. Call up some time ago was charged, I remember, with a murder um, in in um, in Georgetown. And then check again, there's a report. Not the street murder PI witness who says she knows murder accused for 20 years failed to appear, failed to identify me in court. This was called up was charged. And then when this lady, after telling the court that she has known. Murder accused Osafo Grandel called Safo or call up for two decades. A witness to the murder of Marlon Sion Rodney called George yesterday failed to identify the man in court. Police prosecutor Dominic Bess, who's representing the state in this matter, asked the woman to identify Grandel in court. At that time, the accused was sitting in the prisoner's dock, six feet away from the witness dock. They said the principal magistrate who was present also failed to get the witness to identify the defendant. Also, and then that, that was in um, 2019. <laughs> 2019, and then in 2021, former murder accused turns self in hours after wanted bulletin was issued. And Kaicho News is saying that former murder accused, the same Osafo Seresti Grandel 42. Carl Safo, Cornell, or Corner, Fremont Street, East Apprentice, Georgetown, yesterday turned himself in at the breakdown police station hours after a wanted bulletin was issued for him. Police say he was wanted by the police in relation to the killing of 27 year old Dale Christopher uh, Carl Sunskull. Sunskull was from Tiger Bay, Rosemary Lane. And they had, if you recall, well, I know if you can recall, they had a, um, this thing occurred, Mash Morning, 2021. Marsh morning. They had some big fat somewhere in large. According to the DG and them, they had about 500 armed persons attending. And then shots rang out. At the end of the day, Sun Skull was killed. And the call up name was called in that. And um, police issued a wanted bulletin for him. And then, in the, in the same matter, you know, you got to do the research and find these things, you know. It is reported that the main witness 
disappeared. And a, a, a car was set to fire at the coconut farm in my corner there. Left the tea, left the tea cake, cake dot farm. And it was said that the main witness in one of these cases, I think in that case, was killed and born beyond recognition in that car. Police had said then they got to get DNA to um, identify, do DNA tests to identify the, the, the body. So, I, I, again, I say, one day if they are investigating any connection between Dreddy murder, this drive-by shooting where this man get 12 shots and survive. Lucky you, your brother. Your time ain't come yet. Time ain't come yet. Right? And then now, this attempt with AK-47, that's what the police, police report. See, see, this drive-by shooting, your brother. What, what can we um, learn from that? Well, I don't know whether the police learning anything. As you already mentioned there, there should be connections. And then again, you know, what about the ballistics? What about the forensics? They they recovering spent shells and, and non spent shell and then and when much no 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 gun elsewhere. And if nothing else, I mean it, it's just frightening they mean that several weapons are being used at different locations. Nothing in machine. What am we with, with, with the ballistic ballistic export? Just like how they define they said they find great gray by in, in the court the coming matter with an unlicensed firearm and they trace it to the spencer and they find at the scene of the murder. They they ain't finding nothing. Something is wrong with our ballistics, something is wrong with our forensic. And then again, I got to repeat it often. We have a, a superintendent spent five years in Russia doing forensic science did exceedingly well and where should they lock up in the office as a force training officer with no training background with no real experience in in, in policing something that will left on the scene find something on the scene do meticulous work you can you find in special you're not tracing them to no scene you're not tracing them to any weapon something is wrong we, do, we don't have, have ballistic, ballistic exports. We don't have forensic exports. I heard the other day that said that um, they, they're, they're getting three Indian forensic e exports to come in. And then I heard they send a set of police to India. I think they presently you know, on a very short training program. Not to do forensic science, you know, but do a for, forensic interview. Forensic interview. And Nanla is sparing in it, not the Minister of Home Affairs. I'm saying. If they do proper work of these drive-by shootings, if they have proper data in terms of ballistics, and if they do proper forensic work, they will be able to solve some of those drive-by drive -by shootings. And as you mentioned, there are connections. There are connections. You don't have to, have, have to go to university to see that. 100% wild-crafted CMOS. From nature, by natives. Why pay more? All these people die one way. Listen to how they die. They are at a location. And someone call them on the phone. To come and meet them outside. Paper shots. Dready. Lubat. Bamafield. 90. 90. All these people die the same way. 